So the plan today is to get this onto the milling machine. We're gonna put a chamfer on here, remove this all back one mil, and then put a nice little 3D contour around here. We're also going to remove a section from here. So I don't know how that's gonna go. And that'll have to do just a bit of reinforced, I don't know, what's it called, gaffer tape, whatever you wanna call it. Bang some of that on. And then hopefully I shouldn't have to clean out that bearing as that one's a bit harder to remove being in a blind hole. So I'd say that's good enough. I've got less than um, 20 microns deviation across this. Um, so that will be sweet. Next, we're going to use the uh, test indicator to indicate this. I've got a little coaxial attachment thing, so that should be pretty cool. Use that for the first time. Now for my birthday, I bought myself a budget DTI and um, yeah, whatever this is called, coaxial, or a half round um, dial indicator holder. It means I should be able to sweep in on that bore, which should be pretty good. So here we are, here's my Bajo indicator. I'm about to indicate this surface and we'll see how close we are. Yeah, never done this before, so wish me luck. I'll speed that up because that was pretty painful, but I think we're there. Um, so we are just shy of 40. You gotta remember I interpolated this hole, so. It actually moves quite a bit there, but then as we go around, it'll, you know, 90 degrees out, it'll be just shy of 40 again. Then we come around here. Excuse this filming, it's terrible. Um, just shy of 40. And then we keep coming around. We're about 90 degrees out, we're on 40, so it's out by about 0.1 the whole way around. Um, you were not doing anything to that bore, so I wouldn't get too upset other than the chamfer. But I don't think the chamfer, you know, with less than 0.1 in it is going to make any difference. Like in hindsight, I should have done that with a boring head, and that way um, the hole would have actually been round, but whatever. So we've got all the tools set up, we've got our 10 millimeter. Two flute, high speed steel, uh, it's the ball nose. We've got the rougher, I'm gonna do most of the work with that because it's pretty good. Um, and we've got the engraving tool. Now, one of the most important steps. <laughs> And then all I have to do is add 50, that is the thickness of the um, height setter. So I've got the mill warming up, the spindle. Um, well, that happens, I will go to all the far um, distances or all the extremes of my program show in here and just make sure I'm not going to crash while that happens and then once I'm confident with that we should be good to go so now it's removing the one millimeter doing the exact same thing again
So the ball nose end mill was in there. Um, I've touched off, set the Z height, and now I'm gonna run it at 50% speed and hover my hand on the emergency stop um, for when, if anything goes bad. Otherwise, I'll speed it up to 100% once I'm confident it's doing what it's meant to be doing. And that's pretty cool, other than the lead in and lead out on the final pass don't quite overlap, but uh, I don't really care. Otherwise that looks mint. Heap better than a sharp corner. Last thing left to do is chamfer it and then we'll clean everything up. Lastly, I've set the Z for the uh, 60 degree or 30 degree um, chamfer slash engraving um, end mill. So, now we're going to put a nice little chamfer on that internal edge there. And it was at this point I thought, that is one hell of a chamfer. But because I'd already started and it didn't go all the way to the bottom, I thought, oh well, I'll carry on. Um, and that's why yeah, the footage there was terrible. And now you can see it in its entirety. She's pretty deep. I think that was a combination of there was a little bit of extra stock there and the hole wasn't the size it said it was in Fusion. The hole was actually undersized to be a uh, press fit for the seal. So I think that's where I got a bit lost, but oh well, she worked out in the end. 